this is a video on how to do some basic chart maintenance in the free open source Gramps genealogy software. Now I'm not a genealogy expert at all, I'm just putting this together on behalf of a friend. So let's get started. Um, first of all, of course, my background here shows a squirrel, all very nice, but nothing to do with family trees. So we're going to click into the Gramps software. That's this icon here that looks a little bit like a family tree. Double click. Yours may look a little different according to how the computer is set up. And I'm waiting and please bear with me because in order to film this tutorial and open things up at the same time, yep, everything runs slowly, but I'm sure we're going to get there. Yay. And here we are. We're into Gramps. And as you see, there's a list of family trees here. I've actually already preloaded this with a basic family tree that's a sample that doesn't um, relate to real people at all. Dashboard, this is the first screen you'll see. But down here are all the different categories of ways to look for the data. Uh, you can, for example, you can look at the data of a family tree in relation to just the people or the relationships that those people have. And of course, charts down here. Um, let's go into the people first. There's a very specific reason for that. And as you see, I've just got three people in this sample chart. There's John, anybody, his wife Mary, and their son Jack. Now Mary I've put in as Mary somebody. If you're used to doing family trees, you'll know why. But if you're not, um, just know that it's always better to put in wives as somebody registered under their, their maiden name, their birth name. Always easier. So we've got this basic family of three anyway. And for the rest of this video, I'll be concentrating on adding in details such as somebody's marriage, somebody being born, and of course, the sad circumstance of having to put in that somebody's died. So here we go. Let's go now from the people tab. But before I do, just one thing to note, whenever you've got a highlighted row like this, it means that that is the person that the software will concentrate upon when it does anything else. You can change that concentration by saying, by, by putting your cursor here, clicking on the name you want. And now John anybody is the person we're concentrating on. And in order to do anything useful, like add in relationships you're, or anything else, you're always going to need to think, first of all, who am I concentrating upon in this tree today? And let us suppose, first of all, that, that Jack, the son, has actually decided to get married. So let's concentrate upon him. I say married. In fact, the good thing about Gramp software is that you can register all sorts of partnerships, all sorts of statuses. They can be same sex. They can be people living together, whatever. But let's just keep it simple and say that Jack has, has decided to get married, the grand old age of 27. And so moving, we're concentrating on him as a person, but we want to put in a relationship because he's now got married. So we're now on the relationships tab, but see, we're concentrating still on Jack. Now, easiest way to add in his partner is to go up here and press edit. And you see here, scrolling down there, you get add partner. So you click on that. And the clicking I'm doing, by the way, on a Windows computer is when I say click, it's one click with the left hand mouse button. And anyway, here we go. Now, they, rather confusingly, Gramps describes Jack here as a father, whereas he's actually the male partner in the relationship. I suppose a prospective father, if you will, in sort of ancestry and genealogical terms. So here we go. There are all his details. Now we need to add in his partner. We can also immediately change, if you, if you know that they're definitely married, their type of relationship. And so we're changing it to married. And as this is a new person, and again, it says add as mother, but it really means add as wife in this circumstance. 
So I'm clicking to add somebody on that plus sign and her given name. Um, forgive me if I'm lacking in imagination this morning. Let's make Jack married to a Jill. Shows my age, that probably. But anyway, and let's see if we've got somebody's and anybody's. Perhaps she's, perhaps her maiden name was maybe. Try to show some imagination here. There we go. Okay, so Jill maybe is there, and we're going to press OK. And they don't have any children yet, so we're going to press OK on that. Okay, so here we are now back on the people screen and you can see there that Jill has been added. So supposing now that there is actually some sad news and Mary here has unfortunately died. How would we add in that fact? Well, we're on the people screen. We've selected Mary as the person of interest who we're going to add information to and clicking edit again edit down here is the useful screen and we've got her basic details here to add extra things here events is highlighted and that's what we want because in ancestry terms her death is an event although I'm sure it would be a lot more for her family were she actually to exist I'm going to add a new personal event and it automatically thinks that as it's already got her marriage and her birth, the death might be coming up. So let's just pretend that unfortunately she died um, fairly recently. Let's say, ah, let me just go back and show you what I've done there. Invoke date editor, it says, that's absolutely true. But see, this is this little icon here that I'm just clicking once and it's bringing up a calendar a date. Let's keep it simple. Let's make it the first of the, the first of uh, perhaps August. Actually, I'm on you there. Forget that. The first of, there we go, say August. And let's say it was 2015. Uh, and so there we go. I'm adding that in. And on this screen, I'm checking that's there. If you know the place or have other details about the death of somebody, you can pop them in there. This is a database after all. But assuming you just want to put that fact in, I'm going to press OK. And OK again. And now you see it has her birth. Actually, these columns can expand a bit like a spreadsheet. There we go. And that death will be there. So that's putting in a marriage for Jack and a death for Mary. But supposing it's not all bad news. And supposing that Jack and Jill have also done something to cheer up poor old John, who's been widowed here, and Jack and Jill have had a child. So let's add somebody in, a birth. Now, in order to do this, easiest thing to do is to go to Jack, because you're concentrating on one of his relationships, and click on the relationships tab. Without more, we don't even need to go to this toolbar up here, because without more, there's an easy way to add children. See down here, the spouse is there, children, and the plus sign to add. And let's see, perhaps they've had a daughter, and so maybe they'd call her Jack and Jill. How about another J? Joanna. And of course, the software already suspects that her name's going to be anybody because of her parent. It knows that her parents are actually married and that she's probably going to have this name, so that's filled in for you. And if you know the birth date, now I've got no idea how this relates to their marriage dates because I'm just making it up as an example. But to, again, to put in the date, it's the same as it was for the, the death. Here we go. It's this icon here that looks like a little calendar and pen. You click on it and the date. 
So say the date was uh, the 1st of September 2015. There's a lot going on in this year, isn't there? But just for simplicity, click one for the date. The month is September. There we go. And usually quicker to actually type in date there. And obviously don't need that naught there. And I'm clicking OK. There we go, computer likes that now. I'm clicking OK, and I'm clicking OK, and I'm clicking OK. Ah, thank you, Grams, for reminding me about this. Gender unspecified. Now, this can, it's very good that there are three classifications because life is a lot more complicated than just for not everybody can easily fit themselves into one of these classifications but for the purposes of family trees usually one can especially in the past and so we know that Joanna in this case is female it's reminding me that I need to specify and so I'm saying female and there we go so now we have a situation looking from Jack's point of view still at the moment he's an only child if you wanted to, if you suddenly discovered he had a long lost brother you could add him you could add in a long lost brother or sister here with this plus sign same procedure exactly as adding in one of Jack's children but here we are we have Jack his father and mother date of his mother's death the fact that he's married to Jill and now their child. One more thing that you might want to look at if you're from the UK, uh, I have already changed this in mine, but by default Gramps will display all the dates in the American format. If that's what you want then that's super, but I know in the UK often people want to change them around. So what I'm doing, I'm going to edit again. If in doubt, actually, always click on the edit thing here because whichever view you're in on the side, whether it's people or relationships or charts, edit is a really useful menu. Edit, going down to preferences. And, and this, actually, that's going to do chart preferences because I'm in the chart way of looking at the data. And of course, I actually need to be in the dashboard way of looking at the data because that's the highest one. Right, let's try here. And here we go. This is the how to control the overall program. Um, we're going edit, preferences, and display for date format. And I've got it as day, month, year. In other words, this would say 1st of September 2015. Uh, if you want to change it to any other way of putting it, such as um, September 1st, 2015, or even 2015, September 1st, uh, you would change it here. But let's stick on, I'm from the UK, I like my dates that way, so I'm going to stick on day, my month, year, and close. That completes uh, this video and I hope it was useful. I know it's not perfect. I'm, and as I say, I'm just doing this as a, as a demonstration from a friend, but I hope it was helpful and useful. Many thanks. Have a great day.